Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable colleagues, I move that the Senate call on the Government of Canada to A, denounce the illegitimacy of the Cuban regime and recognize the Cuban opposition <coughs> and civil society as valid interlocutors, and B, call on the Cuban regime to ensure the right of the Cuban people to protest peacefully without fear of reprisal and repudiation. I move this motion as part of the Transatlantic Parliamentary Forum, a global initiative with legislators in Europe and the Americas in solidarity with the struggle of the people of Cuba for the right to live in a democracy. Previous calls by freedom-loving Cuban Canadians to support those leading the peaceful struggle for human rights and democracy in Cuba thus far have been ignored by the Trudeau government, whose policy towards Cuba has been based on silence and even more worrisome inaction. Given the new reality that the world is living with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it is more important than ever that Canada supports unity among defenders of democracy at a global level in the face of accelerated expansion of authoritarian regimes around the world. Both the violence of the war against Ukraine and the repression unleashed by the Cuban regime against those who think differently show the lack of moral and rational arguments and dictatorial impotence of those who resort to force in order to win a war or to gain or hold on to power. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the world is entering a new era that requires a new strategic thinking to redefine international relations between democracies and autocracies. Canada should take a significant step in that direction by denouncing the illegitimacy of the Cuban regime, whose system and representatives have never been freely elected by the people. Instead of supporting and legitimizing the same Cuban regime that justifies the invasion of Ukraine with Kremlin propaganda, Canada should recognize the pro-democratic opposition in Canada as a valid interlocutor in our relationship with the island. Globally, Canada has lagged far behind its condemnation of the Cuban dictatorship. Instead, our current government continues with its policy of silence and inaction towards the repressive spiral that Cubans have experienced with particular brut brutality after the massive pro-democratic protests of July 2021. The Trudeau government continues to bet on shaking hands with Cuba's oppressors and engaging in behind-the-scenes diplomacy. It is time to raise our voices for all to hear. The silence and inaction of the Trudeau government combined with the almost total lack of coverage by Canada's mainstream media makes invisible the serious and systemic violations of human rights in Cuba and the repressive spiral that Cubans are experiencing, which after the peaceful pro-democracy protests of July 11 has acquired an intensity and scale not seen in decades. By remaining silent in the face of this repression in Cuba, we are complicit as Bishop and human rights activist Desmond Tutu said, and I quote, if you're neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. After 63 years without holding free, fair, democratic, and multi-party elections, Cuba stands as one of the world's longest lasting <coughs> human rights predatory regimes. Since 1959, the current regime has persecuted, imprisoned, and marginalized human rights defenders, journalists, dissidents, artists, intellectuals, and critics. It is estimated that at least half a million Cubans have been arbitrarily arrested or imprisoned for political reasons in the past six decades. Cuba's one-party regime stifles freedom of expression and assembly by locking up people for their beliefs in opposition to the government, outlaws political pluralism, prohibits independent media, criminalizes dissent, and prevents the exercise of basic human rights and freedom. And things have worsened in the past 14 months as Cuban authorities have been responsible for serious and systemic human rights violations as part of a re repressive policy that criminalizes priest protesters and imprisons and mistreats Cubans from all walks of life for simply expressing their views and exercising their freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. Human rights organizations have reported at least 10,000 <coughs> repressive actions in Cuba from January 2021 to March 2022, including arbitrary detentions, imprisonment, forced house arrests, fines, shame trials, acts of repudiation, character assassination campaigns, beatings, internet cuts, 
forced expatriations to harass and intimidate human rights defender critics, independent activists, artists, journalists. Accounts of, of these methods of repression have been documented in letters and verbal reports sent by prisoners to their friends and families. Today, I raise my voice and encourage all of you to join me in denouncing the condition of political prisoners in Cuba subject to torture, cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment. I want to take a moment to highlight the cases of, th of some of these people. For instance, artist and activist Mikel Osorbo, winner of the Grammy Award for the song Patria y Vida, Fatherland and Life, has been incarcerated since May 2021 in a maximum security prison of Pinar del Rio. He's currently suffering from lymph nodes issues and has not been offered an adequate diagnosis or medical treatment for his condition. Then there is Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara, a leading figure in the San Isidoro movement and one of Time's 100 influential people in 2021, was arrested on his way to a demonstration in Havana on July 11th and transferred without a court hearing to a maximum security prison. He has led numerous hun hunger strikes and protests for his unjust imprisonment that have left him in poor health. Felix Navarro and his daughter, Celie Navarro, coordin coordinators of the Pedro Luis Boitel Movement for Democracy, were recently sentenced to nine and eight years in prison respect respectively, not for demonstrating, but for simply asking police about the status of some of the members of their organization that were detained on July 11th. 